Today we want to dive in a little bit deeper into a part of shame that I think is really going to help you have more self-awareness. It's helped me tremendously. And that's this idea of shame scripts. These scripts that we repeat to ourselves, or maybe we don't even realize we're repeating it to ourselves. Maybe, like Jim, you've said, it's like a ticker tape uh, that runs on the bottom of a TV. It's just running pretty rampant in your subconscious, but it's changing the way you perceive things, what you believe about yourself, others, and God and it is affecting you probably more than you know. So what is a shame script? So I'll start. Okay. Are you going to be vulnerable here? I'm going to be vulnerable. Oh, good. I know. And then I'm going to turn to you and, and do some forced vulnerability. How's that sound? Forced vulnerability. Okay. <laughs> but before I get with, to my shame script, I want to tell you how Jim helped me even become aware of this because of course if it's just running in the back of your mind affecting your perceptions and your beliefs uh, maybe you have no clue what it is now some people will say oh yeah i know what mine is but i didn't and so jim did this wonderful technique that helped me realize what was happening so i took a piece of poster board and i wrote i drew out a stick figure scene like little scenes um, Anytime I'd felt traumatized, abused, emotionally, physically, sexually. Something um, impactful. Rejection, Any you know, when I'd felt mm -hmm. rejected or abandoned. Something that felt significant in my life from my earliest childhood memory to the present. Right. So I drew all these little stick figure scenes and had little boxes around them so they were different scenes and I had quite a few of them. <laughs> so then you told me to take my poster and in one of our sessions, you said, now just tell me, tell me about what happened in each one of these stick figure scenes. And it's not about the drawing, it wasn't judging my artistic abilities, not. but um, it was just a safe place for me to say, okay, this happened, I'll tell you about it. And then this happened, I'll tell you about it. And then when I was eight, and then when I was 20, and then when I was 30, and then, you know, I'm old, so I kept going. <laughs> and um, what you were listening for is what, Jim? The impact, because we love to say, well, you know my story and that's it. That's the fact, and you've written about this now yourself, is the impact. I think, well, this happened to her. Then I ponder with curiosity, I wonder what that did to her. The same sun outside today that hardens clay softens butter. So I can't think what happened to your sister, what happened to Joel or me, how did it impact you? I'm always listening and pondering impact. And what became evident is some shame scripts some, yeah. some mm -hmm. beliefs about myself, others, God, that have affected and that still do if I'm not fully in tune sure. with what's really right. going on. But these shame scripts, it, it's these sentences, it's these perceptions, these beliefs that help me interpret something, but not always with the greatest sense of truth. That's right. And, um, you know, I've heard the statement said many times, you know, just be true to yourself. I understand what's behind <laughs> that sentiment. Yeah. But I think shame scripts really point out the fact that we need to make sure that we are being true to our most healed, healthy, whole, holy, surrendered to God's selves. Because if we're being true to our most unhealthy self, if we're being true to our shame scripts, then we probably are not operating with the healthiest perspectives and maybe even with some faulty beliefs about ourselves, others, and God. So all that to say, that's how we discovered this shame script. So here's my moment of vulnerability. Ready? Okay. So my shame script I think is probably one of my most pervasive ones. I probably have a primary and then I have some that sure. are secondary too. But my primary one is um, basically, Lisa, you are unwanted. And because you're unwanted, you need to make sure to never, ever ask too much of other people because you're going to get disappointed. And really, the caution that I give myself all the time because of the shame script is do not ask too much of other people because you are an inconvenience. Notice FIT, fact, there it is, impact, shame script, track, that's what I do, fact, impact, track. The track is, is where you go with it and it becomes relational, right? I mean, to me, you just did that eloquently. Thank you. 
So, and for me, I, it, I bump into this more times than you could believe. Because think about what we talked about on our last show about shame, that, that all humans are created for connection. Mm -hmm. And so think about how this shame script, now you go, wow, Lisa, you know, mine is this, which sounds so much worse than that. But think of how this plays out in my life. Every time I'm, I have an opportunity to connect with someone, I have to battle. Have I asked too much of them? Mm. Oh, I should probably just do it myself. Yeah. Remember this one time I asked something to somebody and they didn't do it. So it's just easier not to rely on other people. Sure. And do you see how it's kind of backing me into this place of isolation? And I battle it all the time. So what's funny is you've let me in on, on a potential shame script about even coming on therapy and theology. Do you know what I battle? I wonder when the day is gonna come where Jim's like, I've given too much. Like, like Lisa, I'm not gonna do therapy and theology anymore. And so I'm all the time questioning, how do I make sure that Jim feels valued? How do I make sure? Do you see how this plays out? And even sometimes- Yeah, and I see what's over here with me going, do you remember what I said before we went yes, on the air? Yes, yes. And I said about doing therapy and theology, sometimes therapy is tiring and that's okay, I'm, I'm called to it. And I said to come out here and I've got a 35 year radio broadcast background. This is God redeeming that because I walked away in 2014 from hosting three national radio shows a day and to come here, it is fun. I told you I'm there and back here this morning. I said, I love you. And I said, you are so fun to work with. You're not a weird theologian. No, he's just cool. And I loved you. And what we've started here. And so I told you before we went on set here is like, Thank you for letting me do this. This is actually so much fun. And so isn't that ironic that my shame script would cause me to back off from yeah. Jim and make assumptions like I, I would give assignments to you because remember my shame script is a faulty perception of myself, others and God. And so, and, and usually leading me toward isolation, yeah. which is where shame thrives. Remember, shame operates in the darkness and shame wants to pull us toward the isolation and the darkness. And so for me to say, oh man, I wonder when the day is gonna come when Joel just doesn't wanna do this anymore or Jim doesn't wanna do this anymore. You know, I really need to prepare myself for that. And it's, it always goes back, Lisa, don't, don't ask too much of other people. Mm -hmm. You know, like, or, or Lisa, you're, you're unwanted and, and eventually mm -hmm. they're gonna say, I'm, no, I'm not gonna do this with you anymore. And so I think these shame scripts not only impact the way we think about ourselves, yeah. but it also becomes a liability in our relationships as we give assignments to other people that they really don't deserve because they're not thinking what we think they might be thinking.